Hello, I'm Stuart Thompson, editor of Digital TV Europe. I'm here with Olga Kornienko, who is uh, chief operating officer and co-founder of EZDRM. Olga, what factors are driving investment in security in the interests of revenue and to ensure that right holders, rights holders' assets are, are valued? Well, I think there's a lot of things that are going on with security nowadays. Uh, and for the longest time, there's been a belief that piracy is a victimless crime. You know, if you look into what's going on right now in Hollywood with the strikes and everything, we see that all these people are affected. And that is one of the factors that makes people pause and say, oh, we see who the crimes, are, who the victims are, and how that process is happening. And that, you know, it is very important to pay for content, but how do you actually get to pay for content? Um, so that's part of it. And the other part of it is, I think, that it's a scary proposition for content owners to pause and say, this is how much of my revenue is being lost to piracy. Because it is hard to calculate. And it is also, you know, admitting where you have issues. And being able to pause, look at the loss, and then say, OK, so I'm losing X amount. What can I do? Because people believe that DRM and security in general is a very expensive proposition. And there are companies that sell it at a premium. But at the end of the day, it's technology that should help people and companies protect the revenue, and it should not price a service out of existence. You shouldn't be stuck in a place where you're either paying too much or losing content. And that's why we structured our service as a multi-tenant DRM as a service offering in the cloud, which allows us flexibility to offer a costly, cost-effective service that is accessible to everybody. Great, yeah. And you talked about streaming. Streaming, people associate with additional risks of security. Can you talk a little bit about what those additional risks are with streaming and you know, what uh, the basic foundations are for providing security for that? Well, we believe that security in general for streaming is a glass-to-glass -glass approach. And uh, it should be a glass-to-glass -glass approach. And that means that there's certain aspects that should go into a holistic security solution. We're just a part of it. We're a foundation. The DRM is a proactive security solution. The other pieces you can add into it are VPN and IP detection. And you can also add watermarking. And those, uh, the VPN and IP detection are also active, uh, proactive type of pieces, whereas watermarking is more of a reactive, trying to figure out where your content leaked and trying to take it down. Um, but in general, people associate anything with the risk. And people are also hesitant to say, well, if DRM is down, my service is down. And I understand that. But at the end of the day, if your service, your content is stolen altogether and you're not making money off of it and somebody else is, I mean, what's, you know, what's the point of doing that? Absolutely. Now, you talked a little bit about EasyDRM's own approach and your service-based approach. Perhaps you can expand on that and tell us a little bit about the key elements of what you offer and how it meets the needs of service providers and what really makes you different. Well, we, when we built the company and we launched the company in 2003, we took a very specific approach and a specific decision. We decided that we're going to do one thing. We're not going to jump around into multiple directions. We're going to do DRM, and we're going to do it real simple. So our solution comes with two APIs. One we call keys with a Z that talks to the encoding side of our industry or packaging. And the other one we call rights, which talks to the um, playback side to the uh, CRMs and clients and the rights part of it. And we have stuck to that model from day one. And everything we've done has been around standardization because we don't want to be the provider that locks you in if you're not happy with our service. We don't want to hold you against your will. But with that said, if you wanted to switch from another service to us, as long as they are following the same set of standards, it's a pretty straightforward process of adjusting keys into our system. So, and outside of that, we know that we do just the one piece. And we basically decided that we know that we don't want to do the encoding, the playback, the packaging. That's, that's not who we are. We specialize on the DRM side. So we partnered with 
all the companies and all the major players on the encoding packaging side and on the playback side. But also we're partnering with other security vendors, as I said, border marketing, geo blocking and VPN detection to be able to provide a solution. Because as a DRM security company, we feel that if somebody comes to us and says, we want to work with you, there's a certain level of trust, especially the security piece of it. So if we recommend vendors, we want to know that we have an integration with those vendors and then we have a relationship with those vendors. And that is also why we prefer to take the approach of let's build it and not make the customer a guinea pig so that our solution is done and it exists and then we can offer it to the customer as opposed to going, wait, no, can we do this? Does this work? What do we have to do? Because that I don't want to be treated like that, so I would never treat somebody like that as well. Now, obviously, streaming comes in lots of different shapes and sizes, lots of different models. How important is flexibility uh, in this? And um, what are the different requirements of different business models? Well, I think it, what, it was interesting for us to see what happened when the pandemic hit and all the companies that were doing business model A all of a sudden needed to start streaming. Like we had a number of companies that went from being festivals and maybe doing festival content um, in the theaters and just having some pre-release content or whatever, all of a sudden needed to stream that. And the way we structured our services, every request is dynamic. You don't have to re-protect the content in order to apply a different business model. So when those companies during the pandemic needed to change direction, they needed to change some of their backend as far as being able to authenticate a license and say, now this person gets this license or now this person has these rights. But as far as the DRM protected content itself, it was already done. It was sitting there waiting to be licensed. So, and I think that yet again, we are a small part of the DRM puzzle or the, the streaming puzzle and we are just one piece and we should not be an impediment to anything other than piracy, of course. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make it as seamless and as flexible for our customers to change models, change ideas, move content from you know, different viewing windows and so on and so forth. Yeah, now you already talked a little bit about teaming up with other vendors to, to complete the, the security solution, to complete the puzzle. Can you talk a little bit more about that? How you, how important partnerships are for you and, and how that enables you to differentiate your offering through those partnerships. So, as I mentioned before, when we first launched, we made the decision to do this one part and we decided to do it really well. And this is why we know that we're just one layer or one piece in this whole infrastructure of streaming. Plus, if we pre-integrate and we do all the work and we figure everything else out, we eventually save time for anybody who wants to come and use our solution. And since we are already, and we all know time is money, so that makes it a more cost-effective proposition. If a customer comes to us and says, hey, we're trying to do this, who do you work with? Oh, we have an integration with this great encoding company, this player, this middleware, this CRM, and the solution is already there. And yet again, makes it faster and more seamless to integrate. But we, as I said, we also know that we're just one tiny piece of it. And without partnerships, without relationships, I mean, I don't know why we would be doing any of this in the first place. Right. Now, finally, one thing that's quite topical is, is media manipulation, manipulation of imagery, wrongful use of AI. All of these things have become quite widely discussed. Um, how big a threat is that and what really needs to be done to establish um, some way of proving media provenance? So I don't know if you're like me or not, but you see an image online and you go, well, I've read this or I saw this, but I don't know if it's true. And right now there is a uh, organization consortium called uh, C2PA, or um, it's about content provenance and authenticity. And it's a Microsoft Adobe driven um, organization that does focus on provenance. And the basic idea is to be able to say, yes, this image is posted online, and we know Stuart was the last person who touched it. So if it's somehow incorrect, we know who posted it, and we know, you know, we can ask you why. Um, and we've been big proponents of being able to track provenance because 
as much as somebody can say, well, that kind of sort of contrary to DRM or maybe not, um, we believe that it's maybe the other um, side of the coin because with DRM, you protect the content and you protect the rights, but you can no longer modify the content. Being able to keep track of provenance um, in a digital way allows you to continue to manipulate the content, be it audio, video, um, photos, but it also allows you to, it allows you to manipulate the content and keep provenance on it. So it doesn't stop the creativity process. So if you wanted to take a photo and do this and then somebody else adds on to it and somebody else adds on to it, we can keep creating without stopping the process. But also knowing who was the last person who touched it, whether or not it's real or whether or not it was generated by AI. And because that's also a question of, is this real? Is this AI? Is this fake? What are we looking at? And that's kind of one of those things that I would love to actually be comfortable knowing if I see something online, I know where it's coming from. Absolutely. Language has become increasingly important, I think. Yeah. Great. Olga, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Stuart.